Hi, I'm Jimmy Toner, and you're watching Capital OTV. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've got a very busy program for you and we're going to start in Arkansas at Oaklawn Park where they conducted the Racing Festival of the South this past week. Kicked off last weekend and concludes their racing meet for this winter time. We're going to head back to last Wednesday's running of the fifth season Breeders' Cup. This is for older horses at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Oaklawn in the fifth season. And they're off in the fifth season. Field way well. Prospective Kiss showing speed away from there. The blinkers on Greater Good have him showing more speed today. Stratostar between them. Arch Hall settles into fourth at the rail, followed by the gray silver axe. To his outside is Real Danny, and Kid Grindstone trails the field. They head into the turn, and Greater Good finds the early lead for one of the few times in his career. And Prospective Kiss settles back in second. Stratostar is in the middle third at the rail, Arch Hall fourth. After that, it's Real Dandy. Silver Axe and Kid Grindstone, the opening quarter, 23 and four. John McKee and Greater Good, snatching that lead by about a length and three quarters. Perspective Kiss still second, Stratostar third. Archall continues on the rail, about five lengths off the lead in fourth, followed by Real Dandy, Kid Grindstone, and Silver Axe. They continue down the back stretch, and Greater Good, loving the front end here today. Half in 48 and one is a very comfortable pace for him. It's two lengths further back then, two prospective kiss in second, followed by Stratostar and Arch Hall. After that, real dandy kid grindstone, Silver Axe at the back of the pack. They head for the final turn now in the fifth season. Greater Good leading a length and a half, prospective kiss is second. Stratostar right there in third. Arch Hall moving up in fourth. Real dandy and kid grindstone take dead aim on them all after three quarters in one, 12 and four. Here they come into the stretch of the fifth season with Greater Good still leading the way. Prospective Kiss is second. Up in the middle of the track, here comes Real Dandy with a move alongside of Stratostar. And up between horses goes Arch Hall. And it is Greater Good leading and Arch Hall coming on now in the middle of the track. Greater Good, Arch Hall heads the part and Kid Grindstone uncorks a late run with Jesse Campbell. They're driving for the wire. Arch Hall, Kid Grindstone, and Kid Grindstone scores the upset in the fifth season by a length. Archall finishing second, Real Dandy was a greater good rather was third, and Stratostar finished fourth. Kid Grindstone getting the victory over Arch Hall, who was the uh, favorite in this field of only seven. Kid Grindstone rallying from far back, did have a little bit of traffic trouble at the top of the stretch, but just blasted through when clear to win by a length at nine to one over the favorite with greater good, showing a far greater early interest here when he had the blinkers put on under John McKee. He showed good speed and held on fairly well for third. The winner kid Grindstone is a gray or roan gelded son of Grindstone from Lady in Waiting by Woodman. Bred in Kentucky by Crescent Hill Farm and Dr. W.A. Rude. He is owned by Wexler Racing and trained by Michael Campbell, ridden to victory by Jesse Campbell. Kid Grindstone covers the mile in the 16th at Oak Lawn in 143 and 3. We're going to head back to Oak Lawn now on Thursday's running of the count. Fleet Sprint Handicap, $150,000 grade three for sprinters. Let's head back down to Oaklawn and the Count Fleet. And they're off in the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap and Bordenero broke like a shot to the lead. Friendly Island rushes up now into second. That Ted is third. Semaphore Man at the rail is fourth. After that, it's Santana Strings. Rodeos Castle level playing field well back as they zip down the back stretch. And Friendly Island, Bordenero, and they are really all in the mail down the back stretch. To the outside, Santana Strings and Semaphore Man make that that Ted and Semaphore Man. The opening quarter was raced in 21 and 3, and they're flying in the count fleet this year. Friendly Island at the rail, Bordenero alongside, two lengths back to Semaphore Man in third. That Ted is fourth, is four lengths further back then to Santana Strings, level playing field in Rodeos Castle. Midway on the turn, and it's still Bordenero and Friendly Island right together. Semaphore Man takes third spot. They get the half in 44 and 1. Here they come into the stretch of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Bordenero, Friendly Island still heads apart. Three and a half back to Semaphore Man third. That tad is fourth. And now Patrick Valenzuela and Bordenero begin to draw away. It is Bordenero by just over a length. Friendly Island second. They come for the wire. And Bordenero, an impressive winner of the Count Fleet Sprint Handicap, a length and a half over Friendly Island. Semaphore Man was third. That Tat finished fourth. The six furlongs fastest of the year, a minute eight and three-fifths seconds. 
Bordenaro in from California winning a second graded stakes victory. This guy won the Vernon Underwood uh, last year, late last season. Bordenaro, a very quick California sprinter, duking it out on the front end with New York bred Friendly Island and able to put him away as the odds on choice by a length and a quarter. Friendly Island under Stu Elliott held well for a good second as Semaphore Man sat uh, just off of the dueling leaders, could not make up much ground late and finished third. The winner, Bordenaro, is a gelded chestnut son of Memo from Miss Excitement by Rajab. He was bred in California by Fred Carrillo and Daniel Casella, owned by the breeders and trained by Bill Spore. Ridden to victory by Pat Valenzuela, Bordenaro covers the six furlongs at Oaklawn in a very quick 108 and 3. We're going to head back to Oaklawn now in Friday's running of the Grade 2 Fantasy for three year old fillies at a mile and a 16th. Let's head back to Oaklawn and the Fantasy. They're in the gate. And they're off in the fantasy. A good start. X Chalice got away quickly. Down the middle of the track goes Miss Norman at the rail, ready to please between horses. Sweet idea. Quiet Kim is fifth as they head into the turn, followed there by a Brownie Points. And up between horses, Sweet Fervor, trailing the field in the early going is Lady Danza. They're on the turn, and it is Miss Norman who gets the lead. X Chalice to the outside, second. Ready to please is at the rail, third. Quiet Kim now, fourth. Sweet Fervor is fifth. The trail steady just a bit was Sweet Idea. After that, Brownie points on Lady Danza. The opening quarter, 23 and 1. They head down the back stretch. Tony Farina has Miss Norman on the lead by three quarters. X Chela second. Quiet Kim now. Ranges up to the outside third. Ready to please is at the rail fourth by two and a half. That is Sweet Fervor fifth. Brownie points moves to sixth. And at the back of the pack are Lady Danza and Sweet Idea. The half in 47 seconds. They head for the final turn. Miss Norman leading the way. X Chalice is second. Quiet Kim is still right there in third, ready to please, ready to move at the rail in fourth. It's two and a half back to Sweet Fervor. Then Brownie points. Lady Danza and Sweet Idea as the Phillies continue around that final turn. And Miss Norman tries to take them wire to wire after three quarters, one, 11, and two. Here they come into the stretch of the fantasy. Miss Norman trying to spring an upset, but she blows the turn. And suddenly, looking back, there goes Ready to Please shooting up the inside. Miss Norman tries to straighten herself out, and again she goes to the outside. Ready to Please takes advantage of this. X Chalice is next, and down the middle with a late run is. Brownie points, but they drive for the wire, and Ready to Please now has the lead. On the outside, Miss Norman couldn't get straightened away. It is Ready to Please by two and a half. Brownie points and Miss Norman, but Ready to Please wins the fantasy by three and a half. Miss Norman, after blowing the turn, finishes second with Brownie points third. Bit of a wildly run race as Miss Norman bolted about the quarter pole, but re-rallied, got back into the race and closed to finish second, uh, but ready to please, taking perfect advantage under Stu Elliott of uh, her rivals uh, bolting out of the way. Miss Norman, who got back into the game in pretty good fashion, the long shot in the race at 41 to one, finishing second over Brownie points, who made up quite a bit of ground while finishing in the third spot. The winner, Ready to Please, is a dark bayer brown three-year-old daughter of More Than Ready from Guilty Pleasure by Pine Bluff. Bred in Kentucky by Nordic Thoroughbreds and owned by James Scatorchio, trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden to victory by Stu Elliott. Ready to Please covers the mile in the 16th at Oak Lawn in 145 and 3. A trio of races at Oaklawn on Saturday to finish off the winter meeting, and they're going to kick off with the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. This is for three-year-olds, $100,000 ungraded, one-mile event. Let's head back to Oaklawn and the Northern Spur. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup. Field away quickly along the inside, El Nino, wasting no time. Happy birthday to challenge. Sweetening is right there to the middle of the track, Garbu Road. King's Challenge is fifth. Then in the middle is Polarity. Between horses rushing up high adventure to the outside, Mr. Pursuit, hallowed flag, Admiral's Arch, and trailing is our star. They go past the opening quarter in a rather rapid 22 and three, and that is Sweetening with the lead. El Nino second by three and a half, Garbu Road third. Happy birthday is now fourth. High Adventure running fifth, King's Challenge inside of him sixth. Mr. Pursuit to the outside is seventh. Running out of racing room right there is Admiral's Arch inside of Polarity. It's four lengths back to Hallowed Flag and the trailer R Star. They continue down the back stretch and continue the very fast pace here, a half in 46 and one as Sweetening leads it by two. El Nino is still second. Middle of the track. 
That is Garbo Road in third to the outside. Mr. Pursuit is on the move. High Adventure is there with Admiral's Arch also gaining quickly. Along the rail is King's Challenge on the final turn. Sweetening leads the way. El Nino is second, Mr. Pursuit third. Admiral's Arch making up ground quickly now in fourth, followed to the rail by Garbo Road. Past three quarters, one, 11 and one. Here they come into the short stretch of the Northern Spur Breeders' Cup with Sweetening still leading the way. Admiral's Arch to the outside is now moved to second. Still right there in third is Mr. Pursuit, but it is Admiral's Arch now and Sweetening who are driving for the wire. Admiral's Arch takes the lead. Sweetening fights back to the inside. Admiral's Arch, Sweetening, they're coming to the wire together. Admiral's Arch is going to win it by a next sweetening finishing second. Gar Mr. Pursuit was third, and Hallowed Flag got up to be fourth. Admiral's Arch, the favorite in the field at uh, about five to two, picking up a half a length victory over a long shot sweetening with Mr. Pursuit rallying in a bit, maybe a little bit of an early move. He flattened out a little bit. He made a big move from well back in the early going and could not sustain the bid and finished third. The winner, Admiral's Arch, and finished second in three consecutive allowance races at Oak Lawn Park before this breakthrough performance. He's a dark bay or brown three-year-old son of high yield from Burning Hope by De Hare. Bred in Florida by Padua Stable and owned by the breeder, trained by Steve Asmussen and ridden to victory by Sean Bridge Mahan. Admiral's Arch runs the mile at Oak Lawn in 138 and three. Next up, the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup, $100,000 for three-year-old fillies at a flat mile. Let's head back down to Oak Lawn in the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup. And they're off in the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup. Seen dancing, breaks quickly for the lead with Coronado's vision at the rail. Bo Dare showing speed, Warner right behind the leaders in fourth. Incumbent is next, followed by Ali's Vow, Holy Bridal, and Geisha Trails, four wide into the turn. The leader along the inside is Baudere. Alongside of her, that's Coronado's Vision second, seen dancing three wide in third. Mourner's got the rail fourth by two. Geisha moves up on the outside into fifth. Along the inside is Holy Bridal, Alley's Vow, and Incumbent now trails. The opening quarter was raced in 23 and one. The Phillies head down the back stretch with Bo Deer leading the way. Coronado's Vision stalking to pace second. There goes Mourner shooting through at the rail. It's another length back to scene dancing. Incumbent beginning to move on the outside of Geisha. Also right there, Holy Bridal and Alley's Vow pass to half in 47 and one. And now, with a quick move, Stuart Elliott has taken Mourner to the lead. Alongside of her, Bo Dare is still in second. Middle of the track is the Coronado's Vision. There goes Incumbent to the outside along with Geisha on the move. At the rail, it's Holy Bridal. They move on the final turn. Mourner leading it. Coronado's vision is second. Geisha moves up third to the outside. Incumbent is fourth. Past three quarters, one twelve and one. Here they come into the stretch of the instant racing Breeders' Cup, and the leader is Warner to her outside. Geisha now second. Coronado's vision drops back to third as they straighten for the drive. It is Geisha now down the middle. Mourner to the inside. Geisha, Mourner, 1-2. Coming on the extreme outside, moving to third, a 16th to go. And Geisha has drawn away and drawing clear from this field. It's Geisha to win the Instant Racing Breeders' Cup by two lengths. Mourner finishing second. Incumbent was third. Looked like Bo Dare came back for fourth. Gasha picking up a nice victory here from off the pace. She was far back early. She wore down the leader to pick up the victory over Mourner with seven to one shot incumbent rallying from well back after a bobbled start to finish third. Disappointing in the field was the favorite Coronado's vision. She raced close to the pace, in fact, pressed the early pace of Baudere in the early going, but uh, faded by the top of the stretch and finished sixth in the field of eight. The winner, Gasha, is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Silver Deputy from Gaslight by Theatrical, bred in Kentucky by Robert Muir and owned by Susan Knoll. Trained by Jerry jo J. Jones and ridden to victory by Larry Melanson. Gasha covers the one mile at Oaklawn in 139 and two. The big event of the Oaklawn meeting every year, the Arkansas Derby, which the last few years has really turned out to be very important in Triple Crown competition. A $1 million grade two mile and an eighth for the three-year-olds. Let's head back to Oaklawn Park and the Arkansas Derby. And they're off in the Arkansas Derby. Say hello to Larry, got a good breakaway from the gate. So too did High Cotton down along the inside. Up between horses goes Superfly, joined out there by Private Vow, up quick, close early today. 
Simon Pure is next. Then along the inside is Jealous Prophet. Lawyer Ron is riding the rails as the others swing wide heading into the turn. They move on to the turn, and with the lead, it is High Cotton to his outside Superfly. Right there in third is Private Vow, and to his inside, that is Lawyer Ron. He's close up after an opening quarter in 23 seconds, and he's wasting no time. Lawyer Ron is going for the lead. It's Lawyer Ron taking command. High Cotton running second. Private Vow is right there third. Superfly is fourth by two. Then along the inside, it's Jealous Report to his outside, Simon Pure, another two lengths further back. That's Say Hello to Larry. And then it's another two lengths further back to Knob Hill Delight, followed out there by With a City. A long ways to make up for Steppenwolfer, who is on the move. They went past a half in 46 and 2, and it is Lawyer Ron leading at a length and a half, Private Bow in pursuit second. Superfly is hanging on third, moving up Simon Pure. Along the rail is Jealous Prophet. They got the three quarters, one, ten, and four. Here they come into the stretch of the Arkansas Derby with Lawyer on the leader. Private Val in pursuit second. From far back, Steppenwolf is trying to move it on up. But it is Lawyer Ron who's got the lead, and Private Vow who wants to challenge on the inside. Steppenwolfer in the middle is third. A furlong to go. Lawyer Ron leading it to his inside. Private Vow. He's not going anywhere. It is Lawyer Ron. No disappointment. Lawyer Ron is going to win the Arkansas Derby. Steppenwolfer will close well to be second. Private Vow third. Simon Pure fourth, followed by Knob Hill Delight. And they got the mile and an eighth in a minute 51 and one fifth seconds. Lawyer Ron picking up a very impressive victory. He made a huge bid inside of horses to get to the lead fairly early. It looked like he might be going to settle off the pace as he had in his most recent race, but uh, he went up and engaged the early pace setter in here uh, and just never looked back under John McKee. He took him through on the inside, found a spot for him. The question is whether or not he is going to be able to make that early move and still go on at a mile and a quarter in a couple of weeks. In, in Louisville. Lawyer Ron gets the victory by two and three quarter lengths as the odds on choice over Steppenwolfer, who rallied from far back with a fairly steady move. Private Vow, who was forwardly placed in the early going, in fact, uh, looked at a couple of points like he was probably going to make a pretty strong bid after Lawyer Ron, but he was never really able to threaten under Sean Bridgmahan and settled for third, but it was clearly an improved effort over his prior try in the Rebel. The winner, Lawyer Ron, is a chestnut three-year-old colt, a son of Langfear from donation by Lord Avey. He was bred in Kentucky by James T. Hines, Jr. and is owned by the estate of James T. Hines, Jr., Ron Bamberger, executor. He's trained by Bob Holthus and ridden to victory by his regular rider, John McKee. Lawyer Ron covers the nine furlongs at Oak Lawn Park in 151 and 1. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at a week's worth of stakes racing action from Keeneland. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. In addition to a busy weekend at Oaklawn, it was a busy week and weekend at Keeneland. We're going to go back to last Wednesday for Keeneland's Vinery Madison, a grade two on the main track for fillies and mares going seven furlongs. Let's head down to Keeneland and the Vinery Madison. 
And they're off. Dubai Escapade and Give Me More. And ever elusive between those two. These three come to the front. Dubai Escapade, as expected, strikes the lead early and gets clear with a two length advantage. Still toward the outside, however, moving up the back stretch. Ever elusive draws alongside of Give Me More to challenge for the second spot. Another length and a half to Island Escape. Malibu Mint bending strings between those two, then Atlas Valley, followed by the late running Joshus Madeline, the late running Beautiful Bets behind her. The opening quarter went to 21 and four fifth seconds. Dubai Escapade moves over closer toward the rail now clear with a three length lead into the far turn give me more second ahead ever elusive now takes second by a neck on her outside atlas valley caught wide around the turn island escape back toward the rail bending strings is running some six legs off the lead josh's madeline is down toward the rail seven from the front malibu meant then beautiful bets as they turn for home the half in 44 and three fifth seconds Dubai Escapade, leading ever elusive a length and a half. Atlas Valley goes to third. Give me more drops back. Josh is Madeline, fourth toward the inside. Still five lengths from the lead of Dubai Escapade coming to the eighth pole. Dubai Escapade by two, ever elusive. Then Josh is Madeline, Atlas Valley fourth, and then give me more back toward the inside. Final 16th of the binary Madison. Dubai Escapade simply drawing clear. Josh is Madeline to second. Dubai Escapade wins it by four and a half legs. Josh is Madeline second, ever elusive third. Close for fourth, either Beautiful Bets or Island Escape. Dubai Escapade, very impressive in two Florida starts over the wintertime, under a hand ride to kick clear by almost five lengths as Josh's Madeline closes from well back off the pace, ever elusive, set a stalking trip and held on well for third. The winner, Dubai Escapade, whose uh, sister, Madcap Escapade, also won this race last year, very impressive since arriving in the United States. Dubai Escapade is a Bay four-year-old daughter of Awesome Again from Sassy Pants by Saratoga Six. She was bred in Kentucky by Needham Betts Thoroughbreds and James Blackburn, owned by Darley Stable, and trained by Owen Hardy. Dubai Escapade, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado, covers the seven furlongs at Keeneland and won 22 and won. Next up at Keeneland, the grade two stoner side Beaumont, $250,000, seven furlongs for three-year-old fillies. Let's head back to Thursday in the stoner side Beaumont. And they're off. Lake Alice out running for the lead. Yahatsa SB, Diplomat Lady. There's India on the far outside. Joint effort back toward the inside with Fast Deal heading on to the main track. Diplomat Lady puts a head in front. Yahats is right alongside in second by three parts of a length. Lake Alice goes third, a half length. India fourth on the outside is two lengths off the lead. Fast Deal moves up a closer fifth to her inside. Joint effort is sixth in between horses, four lengths off the lead. Motion on the far outside. Dance Daily toward the rail. Wildcat Betty B between those two. And again, Gap of eight more lengths back to Terry's Charmer, who's last. 21 and four was the time for the opening quarter. Yahats on the outside. Diplomat Lady against the rail. They're matching strides. A length more back to Lake Alice third. India on her outside. Wildcat Betty B angles three wide on the far turn. Fast Deal has a ground saving trip against the rail, but still two and a half lengths off the lead. Gap of two more to Dance Daily. Joint effort. Motion. A long way back to Terry's Charmer. They turn for home. Diplomat Lady leading Yahats three parts of a length. Lake Alice is third. Dance Daily has dropped out of it at the top of the stretch and unseated the rider. 44 and 4 was the time at the half. Diplomat Lady on a two length lead. Wildcat Betty B to second. They're moving by the eighth pole. Lake Alice is third. Yahats drops back and forth. Final furlong of the stoner side. Beaumont. Cornelio Velasquez trying to get Diplomat Lady home. A three length lead to Lake Alice. Wildcat Betty B is third. Diplomat Lady to take the feature by two lengths. Lake Alice was second. Wildcat Betty B was third, India was fourth. Diplomat Lady in from California to pick up the victory here at just about four to one. She had run unplaced in the grade one Las Virginis and the grade one Santa Anita Oaks in her two most recent starts, but you may remember her from winning the Hollywood Starlet and a little bit of an upset performance to finish off her two-year-old season last year. Diplomat Lady obviously took well to the speed favor in Keeneland Racetrack and won by a length and a quarter over long shot Lake Alice with Wildcat Betty B, another long shot back in the third spot with a bit of a closing bid. The winner, Diplomat Lady, a three-year-old, Dark Bayer Brown, daughter of forestry from Play Caller by Saratoga Six, was bred in Kentucky by Mike G. Rutherford and is owned by Charles Coco Kono Limited. Trained by Christopher Posh and ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez, Diplomat Lady covers the about distance of seven furlongs and 127 and four. 
Next up, we're going to take a look at the Grade 3 Shaker Town, a sprint on the grass, $100,000 for older horses at five and a half furlongs. Let's head back to Friday and the running of the Shaker Town. And they're off. Around the Cape broke alertly. Justice for Austin on Yucatan of early speed. Mighty Bow soaring free right there toward the inside. The first five in a line. Then Atticus Christie, Il Capriccio in the center of the course. Man of Illusion against the rail. Moves up within three lengths of the lead. Joined by Sergeant Burt, who drops back one spot toward the inside. Parker Run is next on the Dean's list. And then Mad Adam is last after an awkward beginning. The opening quarter in 21 and three fifth seconds. Yucatan gets to the rail, leads it by a length and a half. Mighty Bow is second by a half length around the Cape third on the outside. Soaring free, the two-time defending champion, fourth. He's three lengths off the lead. Atticus Christie has five to make up. Likewise for Justice for Austin. Man of Illusion is buried down toward the rail with four to make up on the leader. Yucatan around the Cape. Mighty Bow soaring free toward the rail. Atticus Christie, Sergeant Burt far outside. Final furlong of the Shaker Town. What a race around the Cape. And Atticus Christie coming forward to challenge Yucatan. Atticus Christie around the Cape. Around the Cape with a head in front. Atticus Christie is driving from the outside to Take it! Atticus Christie by a neck. Around the Cape second, a multiple horse photo for third. Atticus Christie in from Tampa, where he was fourth last time out in the Tampa Turf Dash. Turns the tables on some of his sprint turf rivals and wins by a game neck over around the Cape with Man of Illusion up from Australia making his American debut and making it, I thought, a pretty good one with a four-wide, somewhat belated bid to finish third. Little disappointing in this field was Soaring Free, who tracked the early pace before fading. He had won this race the last two years, and uh, this obviously was typically a launching point for his uh, turf, middle distance, and sprint campaign. The winner, Atticus Christie, is a chestnut gelding, a son of Atticus from Christie Love by Unbridled. Bred in Kentucky by the Centaur Farm and owned by Centaur Farm and Dan Lynch, trained by Merrill Scherer and ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez, who seems to turn up everywhere they have a winner's circle. Atticus Christie covers the five and a half furlongs on the Keeneland Turf in 101 and 4. Next up, we're going to head right back to the Keeneland Turf on Friday, the Maker's Mark Mile. Older horses going a flat mile in grade two company. Let's head back to Keeneland, the Maker's Mark Mile. And they're off. Gulch approval is being hustled away from the starting gate to go right to the lead. Artie Schiller comes out running in second. Drum Major is away third. And then good reward, Mies approval toward the inside. And Otter and War is the early trailer settling out just over five lengths off the lead. Gulch approval gets to the rail, leading defending champion Artie Schiller by just one length. Artie Schiller now carefully moves up toward the outside just off the leader's flank. Gap of two to Drum Major. Another two lengths to good reward. Mies approval toward the rail. Honor and War, who stays wide at the back, still five lengths off the leader. Opening quarter went in 24 seconds flat. Gulch approval leading Artie Schiller, the odds on favorite. Artie Schiller in second, just one length off the lead. Good reward, moves up into third on the outside of Drum Major. They're both two lengths from the front. Honor and War comes next on the outside of Mies. Approval, tightly bunched pack of six, entering the far turn after a half in 47 and four fifth seconds. Gulch approval continues to lead at three parts of a length. Good reward moves up on the far outside, and Artie Schiller in between those two. The top three separated by a half length. Good reward moves. Moves up to put ahead in front, but now Artie Schiller kicks in. He takes the lead by a neck. They're moving by the quarter pole. Honor and War goes to third. Mies approval to fourth. They're coming to the final furlong, and Artie Schiller has his hands full with good reward. These two matching strides, Mies approval and Honor and War are third and fourth. Final furlong of the Makers Mark Mile. Artie Schiller responding for the lead. Mies approval is running on from the outside. Artie Schiller, Mies approval, photo finish in the Makers Mark Mile. Either Mies approval or Artie Schiller, one minute, 34 seconds flat. Mies approval getting his nose on the wire to defeat Artie Schiller, the defending champ in this race. Artie last year using this race to launch his bid uh, that eventually would take him to Breeders' Cup success. Mies approval right about that time that uh, Artie was offered, uh, was winning the Breeders' Cup, Mies approval was offered for a 50 tag in New York. Nobody took him, and since that time, he picked up a victory in the Sunshine Millions turf over Silver Tree, and then finished second last time out behind uh, English Channel in a very competitive race, an ungraded event that probably could have been a grade two. Obviously a very strong campaign thus, year, thus 
far at the age of seven. For Miask's approval, Eddie Castro's been riding him very consistently and very, very well. Artie Schiller, who runs with his head a little bit high, which may have cost him this victory. He does go, uh, go head, high-headed, and as a result, he, he did not have his nose down on the wire under Garrett Gomez. Good reward, a very good performance to return to the races, finishing in the third spot. The winner, Mies Approval, a seven-year-old son of Mies Son from Win Approval by With Approval, was bred in Florida by Live Oak Stud. Owned by the Live Oak Plantation and trained by Marty Wolfson. Ridden to victory by Eddie Castro, Mies Approval covers the mile at Keeneland in 134 flat. Saturday, a very busy card of racing at Keeneland, and we're going to get the, kick, the stakes program kicked off with the Jenny Wiley for older fillies and mares on the grass. Let's head back to Keeneland and the Jenny Wiley. And they're off. Miss Mambo broke alertly, but so did Zona toward the inside. Marabellis has early speed, starts to come forward along with Brazilian down toward the rail. Miss Mambo now takes back. It's Zona, Brazilian, and then Marabellis on the outside. Miss Mambo goes fourth. Wind is fifth on the outside. Amarama next back toward the rail. Then Ambitious Cat, who's running next to last in the early going, and the late running Aussie Siempre trails, but moves up one spot from the outside, six lengths off the lead. 24 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Zona leading Brazilian by a half length. Then Mirabellis goes third on to the back stretch. Miss Mambo is fourth toward the rail, followed by Wind who's toward the outside, five lengths off the lead. Amarama, Aussie Siempre and Ambitious Cat to complete the field. Zona is the leader, but only by a half length. Brazilian second by less than a length. Then Mirabilis, Miss Mambo, Wind, who's four lengths from the front now. Amarama, Aussie Siempre, Ambitious Cat last. They got the half in 48 seconds. They're headed for the far turn. Brazilian on the inside. Zona from the outside. They're matching strides. A length and a half in front of Mirabilis third. Miss Mambo toward the rail is still fourth. Wind is fifth and still three and a half lengths off the lead. Aussie Siempre toward her outside. Amarama is down toward the rail. Ambitious Cat is last, but with Within striking distance, they turn for home. Zona has the lead by a length and a half now. Mirabilis, Wind, and Aussie Siempre from the far outside. Wind is coming with a furious rush at the eighth pole to get the lead from Mirabilis. Aussie Siempre needs to find more. Ambitious Cat and Amarama run late to the outside, but it's Wind with the lead. Aussie Siempre, Mirabilis down to the line. Wind under Edgar Prado to take the Jenny Wiley by two. Aussie Siempre was second, a multiple horse photo for show. Wend rallying from off the pace, in fact, wending her way through a little bit of traffic to win by a length and a half, going away over Asse Siempre, who did break a little bit poorly, rearing at the start and trailing the field in the early going. Mirabilis, who was three wide in most of the, through most of the running of the race, where I thought a very good effort with uh, with a solid performance, perhaps one off which she could move up. I thought her uh, her wide and uh, early trip was pretty strong here, although she was no match late for the eventual winner. Wend is now two for two this season, having won the Honey Fox last time out down at Gulfstream Park. Wend is a bay mare, a daughter of pulpit from Thread by Topsider, bred in Kentucky by Claiborne Farm and owned by the breeder, trained by Bill Mott, ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Wend covers the mile in a 16th at Keeneland on the grass in 141 and 1. Next up, the Commonwealth Breeders' Cup. This is for older sprinters, a grade two, $400,000, seven furlongs. Let's head back to Keeneland and the Commonwealth. And they're off. Kelly's Landing, Spanish Chestnut, and Kazoo all have early speed. There goes Kazoo, headed to the main track to get the lead by almost a full length. Kelly's Landing second between horses. Spanish Chestnut takes second, and neck now up on the outside. Straight line is away, running in fourth. Vicarage and Crafty Schemer move up side by side against the rail, just over two lengths off the lead. And then further back, Mr. Fotis in the center of the racetrack is six lengths from the front. Saintly look to his inside, 15 rounds against the rail. Cougar Cat, Sun King, and then Wild Tail, who's last. 21 and four was the time for the opening quarter. Kazoo leads at three parts of a length. Spanish Chestnut is second by the same margin. Kelly's Landing is third on the far outside. Crafty Schemer fourth between horses. Vicarage is fifth against the rail. Just two lengths off the lead, but needing room. Then a gap of six more to straight line. Mr. Foda, Saintly look, and 15 rounds. They're coming to the quarter pole. Kazoo has the lead, still three parts of a length. Spanish Chestnut second by two. 
two. Crafty Schemer third. Vicarage fourth against the rail. Still two and a half legs off the leader. Kelly's Landing is lingering four legs from the front. They got the half in 44 and one. Kazoo is now put to a drive. Leading Spanish Chestnut. Vicarage third as they come by the eighth pole. Then Crafty Schemer 15 rounds is next. Sun King is running late with Saintly Look and also 15 rounds, but they've got to get Kazoo. Sun King is charging on the outside. Look at Sun King from well off the pace. Wow, Sun King to take it by just over two. Close for second, either Kazoo or Spanish Chestnut for runner-up in one minute, 23 and one-fifth seconds. Sun King, very impressive. Dropped back to a uh, middle distance slash sprint, seven furlongs, and came charging. The pace was very fast. Keeneland has been unabashedly speed favoring, perhaps even more so this year than in other seasons. And uh, he really, they were going at it early, 21.8, 144.25 Spanish, or Spanish Chestnut pressing Kazoo. Both of them held on pretty well. They finished second and third, but Sun King came blasting through, splitting horses to pick up the victory by two and three quarter lengths over Kazoo with Spanish Chestnut who got off to a bit of a stumbling start, got up and challenged throughout most of the going, out in about the two to three path, looked like he was swimming up uh, around the top of the stretch, but did settle back down and re-rally for third. The winner, Sun King, a dark Bayer Brown, four-year-old son of charismatic from Clever But Costly by Clever Trick, was bred in Kentucky by Cambridge Farm and James Daniel Conway. Owned by Tracy Farmer, trained by Nick Zito, and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Sun King covers the seven furlongs at Keeneland in 123 and 1. Next up, the Grade 1 Bluegrass. Of course, one of the historic races, one of the typically one of the biggest derby preps, although the last few years it has not been quite as influential as in success in the Kentucky Derby as it had been in prior seasons. Grade 1, $750,000, mile in an eighth, Toyota Bluegrass up next. And they're off in the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. First Samurai comes out hustling with Sinister Minister. And as expected, Sinister Minister with plenty of early speed goes right to the front. Little Cliff is placed forwardly in second. Bluegrass Cat comes away in third. First Samurai is fourth, heading into the first turn. Strong Contender settles against the rail in fifth. He's four lengths off the early lead. Gap of two more to Storm Treasure. Court Folly. Seaside Retreat is next to last. And Saddler's Trick is the early trailer. 22 and four, the time for the opening quarter quarter and sinister minister shows the way by two lengths onto the back stretch little cliff is second by a neck bluegrass cat is third on the outside by a length first samurai travels in fourth and strong contender stays toward the rail in fifth still six lengths off the leader gap of seven more back to storm treasure seaside retreat court folly and saddler's trick is last the half in 45 and four fifth seconds sinister minister leads it by nearly five lengths strong contender moves all the way up the rail into second by three parts of a length. First Samurai caught three wide, headed to the far turn. Bluegrass Cat is fourth in between horses. Little Cliff now finds himself in the fifth position, nearly a dozen lengths off the leader. Sinister Minister trying to take it gate to wire. Leads it by six lengths. Strong Contender is giving chase. First Samurai shadows that one. Bluegrass Cat is lingering in fourth, and the leader, Sinister Minister, is racing past the quarter ball. He's got the lead by seven lengths. Back to Strong contender storm treasure the long shots made up a ton of ground now third and storm treasure takes second on the outside sinister minister is in the final furlong a long way back to storm treasure strong contender third sinister minister with a nine length lead under garrett gomez on this easter weekend sinister minister and gomez to take the toyota bluegrass in one minute 48 and four fifth seconds storm treasure second strong contender third bluegrass cat was fourth a wire to wire romp for sinister minister sinister minister going off at almost eight to one or over eight to one on a course that had just been speed favoring it was quite obvious Bob Baffert was very upfront about their technique here they were going to go to the lead and continue as far and as fast as they could and it was a no looking back event for sinister minister the official margin of victory 12 and three quarter lengths over 65 to one a long shot storm treasure who pretty much picked up the pieces what ended up happening was that a couple of horses did try and go early pressing sinister minister those horses faded storm treasure able to take advantage and finish second 
A big middle move from strong contender. Obviously, Edgar Prado getting it in his head that Garrett Gomez was in the process of a, of a grand theft here and uh, made a bit of a bid up the rail on strong contender, making his stakes debut. But uh, he was well, well beaten by the time they headed home. Bluegrass Cat gave feudal chase in the early going and faded to finish fourth as the favorite at just under two to one. Sinister Minister, very impressive off of a disappointing try behind Cause to Believe last time out in which he did uh, bump into the into the rail repeatedly that afternoon. Clearly has straightened things out a little bit, but uh, a horse that obviously was taking advantage as well of a very speed favoring surface. Sinister Minister is a bay cult, a three-year-old son of Old Trieste from Sweet Minister by the Prime Minister, bred in Kentucky by Mr. and Mrs. L. Michael Owens and owned by the Lanny Family Trust, Mercedes Stable and Bernard Schiappa. Trained by Bob Baffert, ridden to victory by Gary Gomez, Sinister Minister covers the nine furlongs at Keeneland in 148 and four. We are going to pause now for one more brief message. When we return, we're going to be at Gulfstream Park, Laurel, Southern California, and back home to New York. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now at Gulfstream Park and the Yankee Affair on Saturday. For sprinters on the turf, let's head down to Gulfstream and the Yankee Affair. They're off. Locks and Kippers in the nth degree. Procreate and Western Kind, True Love's Secret, shuffled back. All hail. Stormy is the trailer. Four of them mix it up, up the back stretch. Procreate between horses. Western Kind to the outside. Locks and Kippers at the rail. Now Procreate and Western Kind are one, two as they fire into the far turn. Locks and Kippers backs off now. Three lengths from the front, passed by the nth degree. All hail. Stormy has five lengths to make up. True Love's Secret is six behind. In the fifth running, in the sixth running of the Yankee Affair Stakes, course record holder. Procreate is just in front of Western Kind. These two to the top of the stretch. Procreate's a neck in front. Western Kind has every chance outside of him. The nth degree and All Hail Stormy have three lengths to come, and they come to the final furlong. Western Kind and Procreate. These two even. The nth degree is a closing third. Western Kind just in front. Procreate battles. Here comes the nth degree to run right alongside those two. The nth degree in time. The sixth Yankee Affair Stakes goes to the nth degree. He nailed Western Kind, Procreate third all. Hail Stormy, finish fourth. The nth degree under Eddie Castro, picking up a victory by a neck from off the pace over Western Kind and Procreate. The early pace setter set a very brisk pace, 21.11, 42.72, allowing the nth degree to rally from off the pace. It's the longest shot on the board at just over 11 to 1. The nth degree had very limited uh, five or five and a half furlong turf sprint experience, but was very well bred for it and obviously took nicely to it. Last time out, uh, he did run well behind Southern Missile and non winners of two company, and here moves forward in a stake. The nth degree is a chestnut gelded son of distorted humor from Coastal Wave by Dixieland Band, bred in Colorado by Rodney Winkler and owned by the breeder, trade by Eduardo Caramori, ridden to victory by Eddie Castro, the nth degree covers the five furlongs on the turf horse in 54 and two. 
We're going to head to Laurel next in the running on Saturday of the Dahlia for older fillies and mares going a mile on the grass. Let's head to Laurel and the turf course in the running of the Dahlia. And they're off in the Dahlia Stakes. Humoristic and Ernabelle with the first two to pop out from Joyful Jackie showing speed, feeling the breeze also on the pace as well as they push on to that first turn. Now taking the aggressive action is Ernabelle, and Ernabelle's going to grab the lead. Ernabelle up front from Joyful Jackie, the second spot. And third is Humoristic, then in between horses is Sweet Talker, the race favorite racing in between. Feeling the breeze is just three to four lengths off that lead. The outside Dynamic Deputy racing in the clear, some five to six lengths on the front. Art Fan out of the inside, stymied a bit, followed by Finn and Cozy Gain is the gray in between horses. Queen Supreme and Smart and Classy, and Regal Approaches the last horse in about 13 lengths from Ernabel. Ernabel leads it at a good pace. Joyful Jackie second, feeling the breeze third. Here's Sweet Talker getting a dream trip from fourth on the outside. Dynamic Deputy Humoristic is right there. Humoristic's got run two. Suddenly becomes wide open as they push on for the far turn. Cozy Gain and Finn. Art fans just five lengths from the front and Queen Supreme and Smart and Classy. And Regal approaches last. Ernabel speeds taking her a long way. Ernabel tries to burst away. Sweet Talker has got plenty of run. And here's Sweet Talker gliding right on up to Ernabel. Humoristic in third. Art Fan shifting off that fence in fourth. Still six to close in there at the top of the stretch. Sweet Talker leading the way from Ernabel. Continues to run a big one and finally tiring now. Art Fan to the center of the track and Sweet and Classy closing the gap down toward that fence. But Sweet Talker too much class here. Down to the inside is Smart and Classy. It's Sweet Talker. Sweet Talker in front and cruising home. The Dahlia stakes to Sweet Talker and Ramon Dominguez. Sweet and Classy was second and is close to third. Humor Humoristic and art fan. Good to see turf racing inching more northern as we get through this spring. Sweet Talker picking up the victory from just off the pace and really picking up where she left off last fall. Late last fall, she returned off a layoff for two very nice victories down at Laurel on the turf course. Here arrives in gray emotions barn, first off the October layoff and just returns in fine fashion to win as the odds on choice over smart and classy with humoristic, one of the pace pressers holding on to finish third. The winner, Sweet Talker, a dark bayer brown four-year-old daughter of storm and fever from another vegetarian by Stalwart. Bred in Kentucky by Breton Jones and owned by Cortland Farm, trained by Gray Motion and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Sweet Talker covers the mile on the Laurel Park turf course in a quick 134 flat. Speaking of quick, we're going to head to California now in a pair of uh, races for the weekend, beginning with the La Puente. This is a three-year-old event, one mile on the turf course. Let's head to Santa Anita, the running of the La Puente. And away they go. Going straight to the front is Scoot and George. Zan from the outside gate right there too and Chadlington down at the rail. Those three, the early leaders, with Stratham settling down fourth. Global Genius racing along in fifth. Genre's taken back second last and Lightning Hit is the trailer, eight lengths off the leader. Into the first turn they go, and a Chadlington setting the pace here. Not in all, any bigger hurry. Chadlington just ambling along a length and a bit in front with Scoot and George tracking in the second spot. Zan is on the outside. At the rail comes Stratham, only three lengths off these leaders. Global Genius in a good spot, fifth, been followed by Genre. And at the back is Lightning Hit. Eight lengths covers the lot. They make their way to the half mile pole and still Chadlington and David Flores taking them along by one length with Scoot and George in second. Zan is on the outside. They followed by Stratham and Global Genius fifth, four lengths off the leader. Genre back second last and Lightning Hit continues to trail. Into the turn they go and Chadlington three parts of a length to Scoot and George. Down at the rail we have Stratham up alongside Zan. Global Genius three lengths off the leaders. Then Genre and still the trailer lightning hit. They come into the top of the lane. Chadlington, Zan on the outside. Scoot and George between the two of them. Genre in the white cap grandstand side coming home gamely. Then Stratham and Golden Genius. They come far home wide open now. Chadlington now getting swallowed by a wall of horses. Genre on the outside. Zan going through down at the rail is Stratham. And Stratham bursts forward on the inside. Genre second, but Stratham's going to win it. And Stratham has beaten Genre. Lightning hit came from last to snatch third. And then Zan and Chadlington in a photo for fourth.
Stratum picking up the one mile victory here and taking on uh, Genre, another European bred who had begun his American career by getting a win on the disqualification of Bob and John earlier on this year. But here Stratum is able to get the better of him late. He had a nice bid from off the pace, made a nice middle move, got into contention and then just waited under David Cohen, let loose and won by a length and a half over Genre with lightning hit rallying from off the pace to finish third. Stratum, a bay cult, a son of Mozart from Bean Island by a fleet, was bred in Ireland by Epona Bloodstock and is owned by Jerry Jemgachin, owned by, t or trained by Tim Yudkeen, and ridden to victory by David Cohen. Stratum covers the mile at Santa Anita, the turf course in 136 flat. We're going to head back to Santa Anita, back to the turf course, the downhill turf course for the Las, Las Cienegas on Sunday. This is a five or six and a half for a long sprint, a grade three for fillies and mares. Let's head to the downhill turf course in the Las Cienegas. And away they go. Well, appeared to come out well. After the start, Awesome Lady dropped back pretty fast, and Dan Clare's last early. Here's Star K showing good speed, but there goes Cambio Corsa. Cambio Corsa from the outside gate, and Star K, and they absolutely fly. Sandra's Rose in the gold colors right there, and Mystic Chant the Grey. Those four very fast. A gap of five lengths back to Lock and Key, being followed then by Das Fidonia, 11 off these leaders. Awesome Lady outside of that, Freak and Streakin, and Dan Clare the last two. Just under a half mile to go now along the inside. We have Star K, Cambio Corsa right up alongside. They three clear of Sandra's Rose. Then comes Mystic Chant being followed by Lock and Key who's eight lengths off the leaders. Then comes Dan Clare, Das Vidanya, Awesome Lady and Freak and Streak in his last. They turn for home and Cambio Corsa's gone clear now. Cambio Corsa's opened up three lengths. Here's Lock and Key now coming to take a run in the white colors on the outside. Cambio Corsa widens. Cambio Cambio Corsa opens up five. Lock and Key's finishing strongly though. Cambio Corsa finding more on the lead. Lock and Key chasing gamely. Cambio Corsa goes on. Lock and Key catching stride for stride. Cambio Corsa gonna get there. Cambio Corsa a half a length to Lock and Key. Sandra's road third and Dan Clare finishes fourth. Cambio Corsa, who is the horse for course of the downhill turf course, if ever there was one, seven for seven. Now six in a row here under John Court, and she certainly does love this downhill turf course. She got to the lead fairly early and was able to hold off three quarters of a length. Lock and Key, who rallied from well back. Sandra's Rose had a stalking position after having a little bit of a bumpy break and finished in the third spot. The winner can be a Corsa, a gray or roan filly, a daughter of Avenue of Flags from Ultra, Ultra Fleet by a fleet was bred in California by John Fradkin and Diane Fradkin, owned by Leatherman Racing Limited and Ray and Jan Racing, trained by Doug O'Neill and ridden to victory by John Court. Cambio Corsa covers the six and a half on the downhill turf in 112 and three. One more stakes race for the weekend, that on Saturday at Aqueduct, the Cumley for three-year-old fillies in grade two company at a flat mile. Let's head down to the big A in the running of the Cumley. And they're off. Win McCall right to the front. Some early speed from Mama Dean as well. Moving up the chute, and it is Win McCool. Very eager early on, out there by length and a half. Mama Dean giving chase second by another three, and Regal Engagement has been reined in to run back in third. And the three at the back are Miraculous Miss, better now. And Daytime Promise up the back stretch. Win McCool well off the rail she's way out there in about the five or six path and she's running quickly at 22 and three first quarter on the fence mama nadine is second by another three regal engagement still rating while back in third a break of another three back to miraculous miss daytime promise and better now the trailer approaching the half mile pole still off the rail win mccall plenty of room at the inside for mama nadine and regal engagement's going to try to split those two as they hit the turn and they ran a half in 45 and three and regal engagement now splits rivals and takes charge with three furlongs to go win mccall trying to get back at around the outside mama nadine took a good run at the lead but she's now back to third Third, a break of another three and a half back to daytime promise. Better now. And the field turns for home. Regal engagement is off the turn with the lead. Win McCool is fighting her hard all the way. But it is Regal engagement with the lead by length and a half. 
Win McCall's not done yet, still fighting hard. Miraculous Miss in with a fighting chance, a good fighting chance indeed. The final 16th, Regal engagement in front. Here comes Miraculous Miss to win. Miraculous Miss won it by a length on the line. Regal engagement was second, a three-way photo for show among daytime promise Mama Nadine and Win McCool. Miraculous miss, making the off-the-pace miraculous victory. And uh, it turned out that she won it in much more handy fashion than one would have thought mid-stretch. It did appear that uh, Regal engagement might be home free, but uh, as Tom Durkin called it, miraculous miss is in with a chance, and a chance she had to win by a length and a quarter as the odds-on choice over Regal engagement with daytime promise back in the third spot. The winner, Miraculous Miss, is a chestnut three-year-old daughter of Mr. Greeley from No Small Miracle by Silver Deputy. Bred in Kentucky by Dr. Akijiro O'Hara and owned by Puglisi Stable and Steve Closaris. Trained by Steve Closaris and ridden to victory by Kent DeSormo. The winner last time of the Forward Gal at Gulfstream Park arrives in New York. Miraculous Miss picks up the Comley in one mile in 136 and three. That's going to wrap up a very busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.